Morning, saints. Great to see you today, Tuesday, the 17th of November. Gathered again in God's Word, Treasury of Daily Prayer for the Psalm, and the Gospel reading for today takes us to Matthew 27, just before Jesus' crucifixion. As we gather, remember <clears throat> daily prayer in the hymnals, the morning section. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is Psalm 148, the first six verses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. And He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. And that decree from God is that we should have a Savior, and that would be Jesus. The Gospel reading for today again, Jesus before Pilate, the crowd chooses Barabbas, Pilate delivers Jesus to be crucified, and then Jesus is mocked. From Matthew 27. Now Jesus just stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But, when he acu but he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? And he gave them no answer, not a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom he wanted. And they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that was out of envy that he, they had delivered him up. Beside, when he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him in a dream." Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning. And he took water, washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. Then he released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him and put a robe on him, and put their own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. And they took him out. They found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled this man to carry the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are grave hours for Jesus at the end of his life. And remember, as Jesus does all of these things, it is for you, dear saint. These accounts of Jesus silent before the government was not the sign of a wimpy man, not the sign of a man cowering in fear. These and these, this silence of Jesus is a silence of love. He knew 
His fate was to die on the cross. He was willing to go that direction. He could have stopped this. He could have stopped any of this by calling down 10,000 leagues of angels, but Jesus did not. He endured all of this suffering. He endured the soldiers mocking him. He endured all of the questions, the beating, the flogging, all of these things. He endured that so that you would not go to hell. That's the love that Jesus has for us. We heard it in the psalm over and over again. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Who else would do this for us? Who else could? No one can stand in our place in front of God and take our sins away except the sinless Lamb of God, and that's exactly what he did for us. As we look at the gospel reading for today, we see some things in here. Barabbas is there, a notable prisoner, notorious, insurrection and murder. If you looked on the top ten list in Jesus' day, it would have Barabbas on it. Everyone knew about him. They knew how horrible it was, he was. And interestingly, when you take his name apart, Bar, Rabbis, Bar means son of, and Rabbis means rabbi. Barabbas was a preacher's kid. He was the son of a rabbi, and he was a wayward son. And yet the crowds would choose this man that they probably feared over Jesus Their hate for Jesus and what he was doing. This crowd right here, stirred up by the Jews and the chief priests, would rather have this this murderer in their presence and take their chances with him than have Jesus, the Prince of Peace, loose. It really does show the darkness of our heart, doesn't it? How deeply sin affects us when we can't even make a safe decision. We simply want this man dead. And that's what was going on here. They release Barabbas. Pilate, with all of Pilate's faults, Pilate really did try to bring justice, try to get Jesus released. But everything he tried would not overcome the hate and the anger of the crowds who pushed Jesus to death. Pilate tried again and again, tried to release Barabbas. They wouldn't have it. And then they said, what shall I do with your Jesus? And there come the words, crucify him. Crucifying him, as we'll talk about more tomorrow, is not just taking him out and nailing him to the cross. The Roman government knew how to kill people, and they knew how to kill people quickly and expediently. Crucifixion was none of that. Crucifixion was pain and suffering to make an example out of this man so that others who would see this would not want that to happen to them. That was the death that lay in front of Jesus. Pilate, when all of this is going on and he can't find a way out of it, brings a bowl of water and, if you will, ceremonially washes his hands. I am innocent of this man's blood. He can't get Jesus off. He knows an innocent man is going to death. He knows he is the one who makes that decision. So he thinks that if he washes his hands, he's free. He doesn't have any responsibility now to this because it's out of his hands. And he thinks that will make him clean. Dear saints, we do that too. We do that too thinking that I don't have any control. I wash my hands of this. I'm not responsible for it. All of that is is over and above me and I'm done with it. We cannot excuse ourselves from the situations that we get into, either the ones that we rightfully are into because we've done them or the situations that happen around us. We live in a sinful, broken world and we cannot magically wash our hands and say, that's it, I'm free from this. Any more than the scribes and the Pharisees could say they didn't kill Jesus because they weren't the one who nails his hands to the cross. Pilate brought that water there washed his hands, and thought he would be free of it. And isn't it interesting that our Lord uses the very water and the word of God to wash us and to make us clean from the things that should kill us. He is the one doing the baptizing. He is the one who does forgiving. When I try to cleanse myself, it will never work. But when God does it through his word and promise, you know it works 
because it draws us back to what's going on in the gospel. Jesus being our willing sacrifice for our sins. Jesus being the Lamb of God that is now being lifted up, nailed to the cross, suffering and dying, not because of his error or his sin, but because of mine and yours. And yet he willingly did that. An amazing gift of love for you. There's a quote here at the end of the gospel reading or close to the end of the gospel reading. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. They didn't care about Pilate. They would take responsibility for his death and they had no idea what they were asking. It's kind of ironic if you're a follower of what used to be called the Passion Play in Spearfish. Many of you or most of you have seen that. And when the Passion Play was going on, it recreated these events from the Last Supper all the way through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it was a number of years ago, there was a lawsuit brought against the, uh, the organization of the Passion of the Christ that was going on there, the, the crucifixion of Jesus, <laughs> because of these words. There was a number of Jewish people that felt that these words were offensive to them and they wanted these words and they got these words removed from the dialogue at the end of Jesus' life. Let his blood be upon us. It's just another way to show us how deeply flawed we are, how broken we are. These are the words of eternal life. Let his blood be upon us and our children. Let the blood of Christ from his cross be upon us and our children. And in that blood is forgiveness of sins. In that blood is forgiveness from Christ to you. And anyone who would cry out, let his blood be upon us, and think that they could kill the Christ, or someone who could say, we don't want that to be seen or said because it makes us look bad, again, shows our sin and how far we are from seeing the truth of what went on in G at the end of Jesus' life is for you and me and for all people. Yes, let his blood be upon us. Let the blood of Christ flow from his cross today over you through the waters of holy baptism, reminding you that in his blood you are forgiven, you are free, you are cleansed, and you are his dear child. Live with that today. And as we recognize what Jesus did for us, it's very easy to say what the psalmist said. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all of His angels. Praise Him, all of His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars, over and over again. Praise Him. Because He is the Lamb of God that came into this world and saved you through His death and resurrection. In the name of Jesus, amen. We continue in the waters of baptism again today, in the third part of baptism. How can water do such great things? Certainly not just water, but the Word of God in and with the water does these things, along with faith which trusts in the Word of God in the water. For without God's Word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the Word of God in that baptism, that is, a life-giving water, rich in grace and washing of the new birth of the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3. He saved us through this washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Through the water, through the blood, through faith in Christ that he gives to us, we become heirs of this heavenly richness. We confess the Christian faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, because of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that believing in him we might have everlasting life. Continue to grant us your Holy Spirit that we might remain steadfast in faith to this end and finally come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining me today. God's blessings on your day. And remember to let the blood of Jesus cover you today. Remember your baptism. Go in his peace.